Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over an older one I've made, um, but updated with some new tooling. Um, and that is my LinkedIn Google scraper. So what this is gonna do, it's going to look at Google for certain LinkedIn results. Now, in the previous video, uh, because it was designed for people perhaps not with a lot of um, money to invest in tools, it was meant to be very simple and easy to use, it just used a simple HTTP call to go to Google and then get 10 results at a time. So it was free and it was consistent. The downside is it only gets 10 results at a time. And because you're directly calling to Google, every now and then it's going to return an error result from having called them too often and it's telling you slow down too many requests, or it's gonna ask for a capture and say so you have to have extra sequences built into account for that. So I've updated this to work on a much larger scale by incorporating a tool called SERP AI. Okay, so this is a, a tool basically that will search Google for you through an API, through their services. So you don't get any of those requests, um, those problems. And it also means you can get 100 results at a time, which is really nice. And it's um, fairly reasonably priced as you can see here. So the idea here is that instead of calling direct to Google, we call to the SERP and then we enrich them through find email and then we add them to our outbound campaign, et cetera, et cetera. Now I should say, this is part of a collection of automations I'm making, which is another reason I'm launching this on school. So please, if you're interested in this, go to school. I put this up there um, for free, this particular, this particular automation. Um, but the, the, the sales pack I'm putting together is basically an end-to-end -end service for sales. So it will um, you know, buy burner domains, connect DNS records, get Google workspace accounts set up, enter those email addresses, you know, cre create some multiple email addresses, put them in a warming system in Smart Leads, create a campaign, find people as we see here, enrich them, put them on, you know, multiple campaigns that use AI to create videos for people who are kind of interested, handle opportunities, handle clients. And when you get the clients, system starts again. So if obviously if you're an email outbound agency, then it will then find domains for these new clients, do the DNS, et cetera, et cetera. So it's quite a, you know, a large collection of automations, which is why I haven't put up uh, most videos recently. So since this one is part of the collection and done, I thought it'd be cool to put it up. So to get started, hop into Airtable. And just as before, you know, we'll set up a campaign. So we'll give it a name, okay? In this case, the type is Scraper, okay? Because I don't want it to search for Apollo. So we'll just mark that as Scraper. Our, our mark, you know, the ones we want is Active. So we'll see here, there's two active ones. And then the slight change here is instead of copying the direct URL from Google, we're just putting in what we want to search Google for. So here, site colon linkedin.com slash in marketing portrait aviation, marketing portrait mechanics. I'm not even sure if this will have any results. We have a start page um, and we have the clients that it's attached to. So this will work with clients who are active. So if you have a client in your client tab, for example, who you mark as you know, not buying anymore or they're in a warming stage, it won't run the campaigns for them because there's no point. So it'll only do people, the clients are active, the campaigns are running and uh, it's the right particular type. So once we've set that up, the, uh, the, the, the NA10 will work. So the first step is to check campaigns. So I'll just unpin this previous test and run it. So here we see we've returned two, 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 two campaigns when we run the test. We're looking for campaigns that are to do with um, scraping. Okay, we've got one for Marketing Portugal and we've got a one called LinkedIn Problem Accounts. These are the ones we saw before, okay? The next step, okay, the next, <clears throat> the next step is to run it through some code. So this code here, this JavaScript, it takes the start page and increases it by 10. So we have an original start page of zero for one of the campaigns and another one for 10. If I just come into the sales pack here, we have a start page of zero for marketing, 10 for problem account. And we want the, 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 the new versions to be 10 and 20 as we see here, because the next time we run the automation, we don't want to run the same page we ran before. So this always needs to be updated. But we're not going to be we're not going to be updating it. Here we have a get request to SERP uh, api.com slash search. Here you put in your API key. Okay, we're making a search to the Google search engine. We have here the search that we're making. So we've mapped this to the um, the search field. So as we see here, this is searching for LinkedIn.com slash in marketing Portugal aviation. Okay, uh, we have the Google. Uh, domain value, blah, 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 this is not so interesting. And then the start page is connected to the start page we have before. And the number is 100. So we're asking for 100 results. So if I test this step, unpin and test. Oh, it's failed because ah, I didn't put in my API key. All right, I'm just going to put it in. Okay, so now I've put in the API key, ran it, took it out again. Okay, and uh, we have uh, some results. So this is hard to see if I put it into table mode. 
Okay, so we've got some results, the search metadata meta of what we've been searching for, the search parameters, so start page zero, number 100. Um, so this is for the first one. All right, it tells you how many results we've got. All right, just make sure that the query was proper. And we've got some results already. We've got Richard Thomas, we've got a link, we've got some more information, surf AI link, blah, 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 blah. This stuff is less interesting because this is inline images, suggested search. We want to come to organic searches and we've got some results. So Isabel Pereira, we have her direct link to LinkedIn. Okay, um, we have, um, yeah, we have, we, uh, we have um, some snippeted highlighted keywords. Um, it's, um, I think, useful as you can see so we've got 100 results already instead of just 10 and we don't have to run a regex to get this particular linkedin result so now that we have those results i'll just pin this again we need to do a next part is a switch to just make sure there are some results okay so this is looking for a field search information organic results states does not contain fully empty so when i tested this earlier i put in page like two million and of course there were no more results the page had run to the end and it returns a result under this particular field that says if it is fully empty, the search is run. If it's not fully empty, then we have results. So I'll just test this step quickly. Okay. And we see that two of the results, two of the searches, we got the results. So they've passed as true. Um, now, had they passed as false, it would come into the air table and it would use the ID from our earlier when checking campaigns node and it would just mark it as not active anymore. So it would put the end page to zero, market is non-active, and when it's non-active, it means it doesn't run anymore. So it turns itself off automatically, which is great. So you don't need to keep on checking, am I just getting the same things? But assuming it is still running, then the next stage is to update the start page. So what this does is it takes the, the ID we have of the Airtable, okay? Uh, but it just updates the start page to the value from the, the code although I think I've put this in the wrong one, so I'll just update this quickly. So this means that the next time as it runs, instead of running from page zero, it's going to run from page 10. So if I just test this step quickly, I'm pin in test. We should see in our air table now, the start pages are 10 and 20 instead of zero and 10. So I'll just refresh this. Yep, okay, so it's been refreshed. Pages are 10 and 20 instead of zero and 10. So that means the next time we run it, it will be going to the next page, which is great, it's what we wanted. So I'll just pin this. Right. The next stage is another piece of code. So what this is going to do is if we come back to the HTTP request, it's going and then I'll come to table mode might be easier. So what that's going to do is it's going to take this link and it's going to remove the stuff after slash in slash. And then in the case, there's another slash at the end, like because if you have a profile with multiple languages like I do slash EN slash PT, kind of ruins it. I just want the Isabel, Isabel Pajera and then everything in between there. So this is what this is going to do. So if I test this step, unpin and test. Okay, we see here we have 99, 99 results. Okay, so um, we have all of the, the link, the, 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 the people we need, okay? Oops, I made a mistake there. It was on run once for all items. I want run once for each item because we have two items in the input. That was a mistake. So there was 99 results. Now we have um, two items of 99 results. Okay, so if I come to the JSON, here we go. Here we go. And here's the second. So we have the first and the second. Brilliant. Okay, so I'll just pin this as well. So now we have all 100 results. We have basically two, two items of 100 each, and we want basically 200 distinct items. So we have a split out field here, which is going to look after the text. So if I output this, now instead of two items, we have 199, which is perfect. So I'll pin this. And then it comes into find email. Okay, so find email, we're making a post call and we're searching for a LinkedIn. So when I've been testing this, they asked for a LinkedIn URL. If I put in HTTPS colon slash slash LinkedIn.com slash in slash then a name, it doesn't seem to work as well if I just put in uh, the username, which is why I've split it up. So this is why I use the regex function. So I've connected the, the text after an array to here. I'm calling quite a lot. So maybe I'm going to batch this just to be sure. I'll do 10 batches every, I'm just, these are just random numbers. It means nothing to me. I have no idea what the batch limit is, but just to be sure. So I'll break this up just to see what they suggest. But basically we're making a post call. You would put in your API key. I've deleted it because I don't want to steal it. 
And then when you run it, we'll get some results. So let's test that. It's found an email address for most of the items. And then yeah, I've got a request here to say, uh, I need to space out the quest using batch. So I, yeah, okay. All right, so I need to change the, uh, it's gone all the way up to page 17 without any problems, some problems. So what I will do here is I will add in, uh, well, first off, I'll, I'll come back and fix that in a second, but yeah, so it gets the results. Then we want to check for actual emails. So does email exist? All right, unpin in test. Okay, so it's found 58 emails, discarded 141, either because of the, uh, the, the batching request or because there wasn't an email found. But for the emails that have been found, okay, because for some of the people, for example, oh, there's no good examples here. Okay, it's Duncan JJ Potter. I've just got a full name. If I wanna add this into an email campaign, I need a first name and a last name. So I'll put this into a, uh, an open AI generator. And what I'm doing is here is a full name and an email based on the info, give me a first name and a last name. And then I want it to come out as a reject. So here's an example of the user as an output. And we've seen it's made a, a good guess of what the first name and the last names are. So I think that person was a Duncan JJ Potter. So it's just said, all right, his name is Duncan Potter. So that works out fine for me. Uh, in this case, Marta becomes Marta Mourinho Gutierrez. Brilliant. So now I have the first name and last names. I can see. So here I'm making a post call to add a lead. I put in my API key, the campaign ID which I get from my earlier Airtable, uh, the account, the first name and the last name from the, um, from the OpenAI module, a company name in case it exists, a website, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. So as we see here, um, we have not existed. So if I just uh, send this, it goes into my instantly. And then finally it gets added to the CRM. So we have the names, the LinkedIn profiles, the company, and then here I have an Apollo ID. So I leave this blank. So for future, for future scenarios, if I want to make an email based on it being enriched, I will set up a, a, a basically a filter to say, does Apollo ID exist? If it does exist, I know they're enriched, I can do slightly more technical stuff. But the idea here is that even with just the first name, last name and email, that's enough to put them on an initial outbound campaign because I'm gonna have, this was a bad example with the ones I'm searching for because this is just, you know, marketing for mechanics. Uh, I would do a really, really, really narrow search so that my first campaign is like, perfectly suited for that really, really narrow people. And then if they respond, then we have then we have a secondary automation. Basically, it looks at the email they sent and based on the email content and uh, whether they're enriched or not, it will construct something through AI. So if they're not enriched, it will send them to Apollo first. So I'm not wasting Apollo credits enriching people who don't need to be enriched. It's only if they show an interest, they get further enriched. We use the context of the email they sent plus the enrichment to create like a little snippet to add in the email. And then that, in that second campaign, it's like, you're kind of interested, let's book a meeting, let's go for it. So this is the Apollo AI. The only thing that I need to fix now is the API batch calling. So obviously the easy thing to do here would be items per patch to just change this to like the batch interval of 20,000 maybe. But I can also add in a if function here. So I will do check for actual emails and if it hasn't found it, I'll add in another if function here. And we'll say if, uh, let's find an example of one that hasn't been well processed probably. Oops, sorry, this has to go bef before the actual emails. So we'll add in an if function here where email exists, test the step. So true, email does exist. They can go straight into here. And now I just need to remap this. No, great, okay, so that works out fine. And if they're false, they're okay. So I'm gonna add in a filter here. Um, now you could make this another switch to be like, okay, if it's found a person, but there's no email, send it to a different provider and do a waterfall. But I don't really see the point of that. The reason I'm using find email is because they have the best, um, finding rate and all the emails are already verified. So if you find, you know, if you have like a hundred people and it finds 80 and then you send the other 20 to another service, you're only going to find like two or three and then you need to pay for it to get verified. And then out of those two or three, it might not be good. It's very little point, a very little gain for the investment you need to make, especially if you're doing this on a big scale. So essentially what I want here is just to say, if the error message exists, so for example here, Axios error, um, then, then uh, run it again. So I'll just put in here, if, if, if a JSON error name is equal to Axios error, all right, we test the step, we find the people who were in error, 
Okay, so there's 74. So then uh, when that happens, let me just clean this up, then I will duplicate this step and I'll just send them to find email again to do another step. So once we've opened it up, obviously we'll add in the authorization code. We just need to change the LinkedIn. So we'll move this value to where we find the LinkedIn, which was in the split out. So we put in the uh, text in array, okay? And the items for batch is still crazy, so I'll run this now. So now that it's finished running, we see that the people who we didn't get before, we started to get. Uh, still having some um, some requests, so I need to have a look at the um, the batching. But for the most part, it seems to have worked. So we can add in another uh, if function here. I'll just copy this. And then if JSON contact email exists, it's good. So it's found 33, you know, for 41. Let's see, so didn't find it, didn't find it. Another two, three, four, so I'm still getting some requests. So yeah, we need to work on the batching a little bit. We can always add up another filter here. And then we'll just copy this again. Copy this and copy this. And then remap everything. So this, um, this, this, this workflow means that you can do like 100 or, you know, 100 email finding. It looks like it takes, you know, maybe seven minutes to run each time. So you get quite a lot throughout the, the entire, oops, what's gone wrong with my hair? Ugh, nightmare. I need to get a haircut. What was I saying? So yeah, <laughs> using this system, you can get a lot more emails and contacts each time to get added to your instantly or your smart leads, whichever you prefer to use. In this case, I'm actually going to switch this to smart leads for mine, but I keep it as instantly for the time being. And as I say, this is um, going to be put onto my school page now, as it stands. Uh, when it's ready, 100% uh, finished, I'll put it on my Gumroad. So it will be there as always. And this is part of a much, much, much larger project, like a very self-contained sales pack. So I'll put that collection up on both the school and the Gumroad too. So I really hope you like it. Uh, make sure to comment, subscribe, like, blah, 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 etc., etc., and check out my school page. Thank you.